everyone. Welcome back to Reality Check with Jess. So as you see, Trump indicted, right? That's going to be the news heard around the world right now. I'm going to give you my two cents on this because, uh, you know, there's going to be a political spin on every single part of this. So I'm just going to stick to the facts on this one, all right, and let you guys know what's actually going on and what's actually happening. Um, so before I get into it, please make sure that you like and subscribe, ring that bell. Also, I do have my cash up in the corner to our blessed if you'd like to donate and my GoFundMe, gofundme.com slash priced out. So in this video, I'm not going to jump on Trump. I mean, if you like him, you like him. If you don't, you don't. Um, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. I think all politicians are crooks. I don't think any of them really care about us that much. Let me not say all, a good majority. Okay. Um, so that's just me. Right. So um, you're not going to find me sticking up for him and you're not going to find me sticking up for the others either. Um, so let's get into this. Now, what I have pulled up right now, um, the only reason I have CNN is because they had a pretty good uh, they had a pretty good kind of blurb that just explained it all. And I just wanted to get into that real quick. And like I said, I'm just keeping this fact based because everything is going to be about the opinion and what may happen, might happen, this and that, and what this person said. And I mean, you already see Pence and DeSantis acting like little snakes coming in and making comments. I'm sorry if you guys like them, but the reality is neither Pence nor DeSantis actually really likes Trump, right? And here they are saying, oh, this is a political, you know, witch hunt. That's, you know, Pence. And then DeSantis, oh, I won't participate in any extradition. Like guys, get out of here. You both want his seat because the reality is he's going to be taking that 2024 Republican nomination and you guys want it. So what they're trying to do is now get some of the Trump supporters uh, to say, hey, see, we're really not against him. We're with you. Meanwhile, they'd love to bury the guy. Right. So, I mean, it's just it, it's pretty gross. Um, <laughs> but hey, again, it's politics. Right. So um, as it says right here, former President Donald Trump faces more than 30 counts related to business fraud in an indictment from a Manhattan grand jury. Um, and it marks the first time in U.S. history that a current or former president will face criminal charges. So he's expected to appear in court on Tuesday for his arraignment. I guess they're making, um, you know, uh, goodness, what's the word? They are making arrangements for that because this is not just like if it was you, right? <laughs> they're not treating him like they would you, the working class person. OK, they're actually making arrangements. Uh, if it was you, they'd probably kick down your door and, you know, rough you up three against the wall, have you in handcuffs and drag you by your neck out. I mean, let's be honest, right? They're not making arrangements. I always find it interesting when you see politicians. I mean, I get he was a former president, but not even just politicians, rich folks, where they're like, they didn't tell me, I, you know, that you're supposed to make an arrangement for me to come in. Since when? Since when? You know, now I understand what this, the reality is he has secret service. You just can't go and approach the president um, or former president. But yeah, I just find that interesting. Another thing of how regular people are treated differently. Nobody's making arrangements. Um, they're they're coming and, and dragging you out. Uh, so basically, this is about his role in hush money. Now, the hush money payments aren't actually illegal. The charges also haven't been made public, right? Um, but, you know, the prosecutors have been, you know, weighing whether or not to charge him with falsifying the business records of how they reflected the reimbursement of the payment of the hush money to Michael Cohen. So basically, Michael Cohen uh, made a $130,000 payment um, to Stormy Daniels, right? And he did that on behalf of Trump as hush money to silence her from going public, um, you know, about what happened between them a decade earlier. That happened just days before the 2016 presidential election. Now, I will say in the CNN article, I have an issue with the fact that they said alleged affair. If you listen to Stormy Daniels' um, account of this, she does not state it was an affair. Uh, to her, it was assault. She froze up. Whether you believe her or not, that's not the case. But it's a problem for them to describe something as an affair 
when the person says that they were actually a victim. Yeah, you know, CNN, you, you got to do better. This is just, this is a problem. I mean, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, it's just like when they say that someone took their slave as a mistress. Well, a slave can't, an enslaved person can't consent, you know, so we need to stop doing that stuff, you know, and use the proper language and figure out another way to describe these things or call them what they really are, right? But either way, it says, according to the court filings and Cohen's own federal prosecution, the Trump org executives authorized payments to him totaling $420,000 to cover his original $130,000 payment and tax liabilities and reward him with a bonus. So basically, the, the issue is that Michael Cohen paid Stormy Daniels on behalf of Trump, and then the Trump organization reimbursed Michael Cohen and then gave him hundreds of thousands of dollars more than that um, for tax liabilities uh, for the payment and to reward him with a bonus for it. And it's about the way that that was basically written on the books. So the reimbursements were noted as a legal expense on their internal books. And Trump is saying, oh, I had no clue about the payment or anything else. He did that on his own. Um, you know, I, I don't think anybody really believes that. Now, some people may be OK with it. I think that's something that needs to be said, too, about people that support Trump. Um, people that support Trump. Don't now. I'm not going to say everybody. Some may actually believe. No, I don't believe he knew anything. But others will say, "So what? No big deal." And that's the reality. So trying to convince someone that he did it is not necessarily the issue, um, because a lot of people will be like, "Okay, so what? He did it, but I don't think he should go to prison for it, right?" So I think that's that's the difference. Uh, and that's why it's interesting when you read some of these things. Like I said, I'm just trying to keep it fact based because CNN, the audience they're talking to is like, oh, he did this and he did that. And it's so terrible. I mean, the reality is, is that his supporters really don't care. Right. They feel like they like the guy and, you know, they like whatever they feel like he's done for them. Um, they like the idea of the proximity to power because being a Trump supporter makes them feel like they're part of a group. Right. And that, that's the reality, right? I, that's just what it is. So um, it shows that they were, uh, the prosecutors were, were weighing whether to, you know, charge him with falsifying business records um, because of how it reflected the reimbursement. Um, but that's just a misdemeanor in New York. Not just, I mean, a misdemeanor is still a big deal, but it's a misdemeanor. It's not a felony. Um, and then they were also char uh, weighing whether to charge him with falsifying records in the first degree um, for falsifying a record with the intent to commit another crime or to aid or conceal another crime, uh, which in this case could be a violation of campaign finance laws. And so that would be a class E felony and carried a sentence of a minimum of one year in as much as four years. Now, let's be honest, this man's not spending a day in prison. The whole thing is to just get charges on him, right? And my thing is, if they're going to do this, these charges have to stick. Um, and, and I don't think that they would do this and kind of play games with it because of how big of a deal this is. Um, but if he gets off, if he gets off, this is not going to be this is this is going to be worse than not charging him at all. Right. Um, but, you know, as they say, everyone needs to be held accountable. Um, but something that needs to be done is everyone needs to be held accountable. Uh, if we think that Trump is the first, um, you know, uh, president to potentially commit a crime, uh, I've got several bridges to sell you, <laughs> you know, I mean, we know that's not the truth, right? So it's just, it's interesting. Um, it's just interesting how this may play out. Now they're saying it's a rare case. Uh, like I said, because he is the first former U.S. president to ever uh, be indicted and also the first major presidential candidate under indictment seeking office. So he's literally under criminal indictment seeking office. And, you know, he says he wouldn't even think about leaving if he's charged. Um, yeah. And it, it, like they even said here, it's not without risk. It doesn't guarantee a conviction. Now, do I think that they should not bring charges because they don't know if someone can be convicted. No, if you feel like that someone has committed a crime, well, not feel, if you have proof that someone has committed a crime, then yes, you need to proceed with that, right? Um, but then also they're saying that his lawyers could challenge whether the campaign finance laws would apply as a crime to make the case a felony. Um, so there's, there's lots of different things. I mean, he could 
he could make a deal. There, there's, you know, lots of stuff that could kind of come out of this. But I think before everyone starts singing "Yo ho ho, the witch is gone" and all that stuff, and thinking they're they're dancing on Trump, um, no one really knows how this is going to turn out. And the last thing you want is people thinking he's really Teflon Don. So, like I said, if if this doesn't have a conviction at the end of it, this is just really not going to be good. Um, but it's also interesting that this is what they're choosing to charge him with because what has people in uproar has really been January 6th and other things going on. Um, so the fact that they're trying to get him on the technicality, uh, they're, they're really pulling the move that they've done essentially with the mafia, um, which is okay. You know, maybe we can't get you on the other illegalities that you've committed and the crimes you've committed. Um, so we'll get you on, you know, tax evasion, that type of thing. Um, but, you know, I would I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be indicted, but I would like them to look at the other politicians as well. Right. Hold everyone accountable, too, um, because what about the insider trading by these other people, um, you know, basically selling out our country in different side deals and, you know, crimes committed while in office and different things and spying on the American people. And, you know, uh, how about, you know, the qualified immunity. You know, I definitely support, I know cops have a really hard job, but then you have bad apples who are going in there and are using it as a way to be bullies and to harm other people, you know? And what about that? What about holding those folks accountable? So we're talking about holding people accountable. I think they really need to be careful with what they're saying with that, because there's a lot of people that need to be held accountable, but aren't in state protected. So We'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, just want to let you guys know what was going on with this. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think it will result in a conviction? Um, do you support it? Do you not support it? What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. And uh, I'm sure there'll be more news coming out about this. But gosh, I hate to say I feel like this is really like a big hoopla. Um, and if anything, this man's just going to use this to fund raise the heck out of his 2024 campaign. But until next time, guys, I will speak to you on the next one.